So just a reminder about the basics of circular motion. When you have something moving in a circle, an object, uh, there is always a net force towards the center. Keeping that in circular motion, there's some net force there, which is, of course, also the direction of the acceleration. Uh, although the velocity at any one point in time of that object will be at a tangent to the curve. And we have expressions for these three quantities. Net force is mv squared on r. Uh, acceleration is v squared on r and velocity is distance over time, so 2 pi r, the circumference of a circle over the period, the time for one full rotation. So we've looked at horizontal circular motion, now we need to look at circular motion at an angle. Uh, an example of this would be a banked curve like a NASCAR track or a cycling velodrome. So here is a banked curve at a certain angle theta with an object moving around it. Uh, and of course because it's in circular motion there will be a net force horizontally towards the center. In all the situations that we consider in year 12 physics this will be the direction of the net force. Uh, we consider situations in which there is no, for no frictional force up or down the slope. So the only forces that act are the two forces that we normally consider. The weight force directly down and a normal reaction force perpendicular to the surface. Be careful in this situation, it's not the same as an inclined plane. On an inclined plane, this normal force will be smaller than the weight force in magnitude. Uh, on a banked curve, that normal force will be larger than the weight force. They are, of course, not action-reaction pairs. And so we can take these two angles, these, sorry, these two forces, and combine them with this angle to get the following triangle. So here's the triangle. Uh, I've just added the two vectors with some vector sums, uh, head to tail, of course, the normal and the weight force adding together, and they join at right angles to make this net force here towards the centre. The angle theta that the plane is inclined at is the angle between the weight force and the normal reaction force. We can prove that with similar triangles. And so what we get from this triangle by using trigonometry is a range of expressions. Uh, we get the following equations. So here are just some of them. Uh, so you can see just by basic trigonometry, tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. Uh, so this simplifies because net force is mv squared on r. This simplifies, the m's cancel out, we get v squared on rg. Uh, so the angle of this incline can be found by the inverse tan of v squared on rg. Uh, the net force acting horizontally towards the centre is mg tan theta. Uh, and then from that follows that the acceleration is g tan theta. Uh, and importantly, the velocity that you would move around this banked curve at without any friction up or down the slope, uh, it's called the design speed. That's the square root of r g tan theta. Uh, so that's the design speed. You'll notice that that's independent of mass. M, m is not mentioned anywhere there. Uh, so the vehicle of any mass can travel around that curve at the same speed. Uh, without relying on any friction up or down the slope, relying solely on the component of their normal reaction force to provide the centripetal force. Memorizing these formulas is far less important than understanding how to derive them from this triangle, which comes from the vector sum of these two vectors. Another example we look at is a cyclist leaning into a curve uh, so that his normal reaction force um, helps provide a centripetal force for him. So in this example again we have an angle between the horizontal and the bike. Uh, so we have a, again a weight force down and a normal reaction force up like this. So combining these two forces together we get this triangle. This one is a little different to the one we saw on the banked curve uh, really just because we're usually given this angle here in a different place. So our vector sum, again our normal, up here added head to tail with the weight force and the centripetal force is the resultant force there. Uh, and the angle there is between the net force and the normal, is the angle theta that we're normally given in these sorts of questions. Uh, so because the angle now is down here rather than up here, it changes the expressions we get, uh, but it doesn't really change the method we go about them, getting them. So here they are. Here they are, they're once again derived from the tan ratio because we're, we tend not to know so much about the normal, knowing more about the, be more, more concerned about the net force and the weight force. 
Uh, so tan equals opposite over adjacent. So this is the, this is the flip side of what we saw before. Uh, so the net force mg on tan theta, uh, acceleration g on tan theta, uh, velocity can be found by the square root of rg on tan theta, and the angle, the inverse tan of rg on b squared. Again, memorizing these formulas not so important as understanding how to derive them from a triangle like this, because you may be given different information uh, in an actual exam question.